Welcome to the Vineyard Church Message of the Week. We hope you enjoy this message. For more information on this podcast or other resources, go to vineyardlive.us. To learn more about us, go to the vineyardchurch.us. On church, you you just stop, bro. Uh, what's going on, church? Uh, Muhammad Sullivan, I'm so glad you're joining us. Vineyard Live and Dill's on Facebook Live. Thanks for for tuning in. Um, I want to give a special shout out though to the Bloomington campus because they just secured a new building. What? They secured a new building. Shout out to Adam and Corey doing their thing. The leadership down there, man. You guys are doing amazing things out there in the Blooming norm, normal area. Um, this series we're doing is called Jesus Hills Today, in case you're here for the first time. Um, And it's been good. And although the subject has been probably a little touchy for the larger church, you can't deny what Jesus is doing. I mean, my goodness, these cylinder um, testimony, the the cylinders filled with red cards are testimonies of what Jesus is doing. And we give him all the props. We give him all the praise. And so I encourage you, if you're getting healed or touched by God in a powerful way, record that, document that thing so he gets more glory, okay? Last week, my bro Putty, he put on a theological framework down to basically talk about what we believe when it comes to healing and why we don't see things happen every time because we're in a war, you know, and uh, there's another player on, player on, the, on the field. And he does not want this stuff to happen. And so, you know, we talked about that last week. If you weren't here last week and you didn't get the message, go ahead and um, go on Vineyard Live, check it out. It's a great message. But this week I want to talk about faith. I want to talk about what happens when you don't see a breakthrough, how we can still exercise our faith. Because it's faith that pleases God. It's faith that pleases God. And so today's message is titled, Jesus Honors Faith. So let's pray and we'll go ahead and and get it in. Lord, use me. Speak through me. Do what you can do through me, Lord. May hearts and minds be touched and impacted for your glory, Lord. Father, may the familiarity of the stories or whatever, Lord God, be shifted to the side to receive fully what it is you want us to receive today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Fifteen years ago, I was um, living in North Carolina, and I remember going to a doctor's appointment. And, and in this doctor's appointment, I was telling them the symptoms I was experiencing. I was getting thirsty, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, getting tired and everything. And they were like, all right, we're going to test your blood sugar. I'm like, sure, go ahead. They poked me. They read the readings. They looked at the the monitor, they looked at me, looked at the monitor, (laughs) I remember like it was yesterday. Looked at the monitor, looked at me, looked at the monitor, looked back at me, I'm like, are you feeling okay? I'm like, yeah, why? I'm good, I'm good. Like, what did you have for breakfast? And I'm like, I don't know, cereal? I was a cereal killer back in the day. Listen, I used to kill that cereal, man, the Frosted Flakes and the Captain Crunch, big old bowl too. Got two, two portions, man, man, anyway. So I'm like, I don't know, cereal? They're like... Ah, well, your, your, your readings are through the roof. I'm like, huh? They're like, well, you're there in the 400s. I'm like, wow, like, is that bad? Like, let's, what, talk to me. It's like, I'm going to have to go tell, let the doctor know, but I think that life as you know it will be changed. I'm like, all right, all right. Well, the doctor came in. It's like, well, we think that you are type 2 diabetic, and this is what you need to do. And, yeah, from that point, I started doing things a lot differently, you know. They're like, you can't have candy no more. And I'm like, no, what? No candy, what are you talking about? Anyway, well, one thing led to another. I'm going to classes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to manage this thing on my own. You know, I'm trying to, you know, go work out. I'm drinking half my body weight and ounces of water every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm being, you know, just, I'm just going after this thing. And doctors, like years later, they would be like, you know, you've really been taking care of yourself. You're in good shape. There's no reason why your A1C should be in a 7.5 and 8. You know, like ranges, like, well, why? I don't understand. And I'm like, you know what, Doc? I don't know either because I thought I'm doing everything under the sun possible to make sure I shake this thing. I'm trying to reverse this thing for real. You know, I mean, you know, back in the day, little Debbie was my girlfriend, you know. I mean, I had to break up with her, you know. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, so, so, you know, I splurge on snack cakes every now and again, but, you know, generally speaking, I'm doing what I need to do, you know? Like, I'm, I'm taking care of business. Well, anyways, fast forward. Here we are. We moved to... Um, from North Carolina to Illinois, listen, that was a God move, okay? I told God, I'm not living in no Illinois, and here I am living in Illinois. Anyway, I married an Illinois girl. I think that's what happened. I'm sorry, baby, if, you, if you're listening. It's all good. I love you. Anyway, so I, we're in Illinois. We're here at the church, and the church is talking about Jesus and how he heals today through us. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, what? What are you saying? So I'm growing. I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, I want to learn more about this Jesus healing today. We can do what Jesus did. You know, like right now, come on, sign me up. Let's go. So I'm praying for people. At first, nothing was happening. Eventually, I started seeing things happen. People are getting healed left and right. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is good stuff. Matter of fact, I have diabetes. In Jesus' name, I curse this diabetes now. In Jesus' name, nothing. I'm like, dang, man, what's going on? All right, fine, fine. I'm just going to keep on going after it. But everybody else is getting a breakthrough. Everyone else is getting healing. Everyone else is getting this and that, Lord. But what about me, man? I mean, here I am, you know, still got daddy bees running through my bloodstream. What's going on? And I'm sure that probably some people here can, can relate. Some of you here today probably feel where I'm coming from, where you need a breakthrough. Or you feel like, you know, we preach all day. You know, Jesus heals today. You know, we preach all day and we're about, you know, we can go after the greater things. You know, get your healing. Da, 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 da. I get that. And that's good. But what happens when you don't get your breakthrough? Man, he got healed of cancer. I don't even want to hear it because I still have cancer. You know, he, oh, sure. He got healed of mental illness. I still have mental illness. You know, his, oh, it's cool that their marriage got better through prayer, but my marriage is still on the rocks. You know, it can be nauseating at that place. It can be really frustrating when you hear everything else going on, everybody getting their breakthrough, and you don't have your breakthrough. Yeah, man, I know, Jesus, you hold all things together, but right now it just feels like you're not holding diddly squat for me. Like, what's going on? You can get that, you can get in that place. You can get better, bitter easily. But what's God doing? Well, I mean, because God loves those people in that place just as much as he loves those people that got breakthrough. For real. What's he doing? What's he teaching? What's he saying? I believe that he's redirecting us to realize that we have a key ingredient that keeps us, uh, that, that separates us from the world. I believe he's redirecting us to that trade secret. And what is it? We're talking about it today. It's faith. Faith. Romans 1, 16 and 1, 17, one of my favorite passage, pa passages is this, is for I am not ashamed of the gospel. <clears throat> for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Powerful passage right there. Quote, excuse me, Paul's quoting a powerful scripture. Before that, he says that we are, that righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. That means that we can grow up in our measure of faith, okay? But then he quotes there, the righteous shall live by faith. And where he's taking that quote is from Habakkuk 2.4. And Habakkuk 2.4, there's just one little word in there that he misses that he does not quote exactly that's a game changer and that is the righteous shall live by his faith the righteous shall live by his faith you see this is the very thing that pleases God it's a steadfast trust it's a steadfast belief it's a steadfast faith to believe everything that the son believes it's a childlike faith. Shoot, I remember back in the day, my parents, they would tell me anything and I'd believe it. Yo, Clay, look at the Easter Bunny. He's right there. Oh, whoa, where, where? Where's the Easter Bunny, Mom? Oh, I think I see the Easter Bunny, Mom, man. Oh, yeah, the Easter Bunny's coming. Getting all excited. And I, and I remember they would tell me, hey, put the tooth under your pillow. Tooth fairy's going to come. All right, Mom, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You know, two fairies come, come, and I'm dreaming about what the two fairy looks like, what color their wings and all that. You know, I'm believing that there's a two fairy coming. 
Or what they told me back in the day was, uh, if you swallow a watermelon seed, watermelon will grow in your belly. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not eating no seeds. Oh, those seeds are hazardous to your health. Spitting seeds out and eating watermelon. <laughs> Don't eat the seeds. Oh, dang, watermelon's going to grow in your belly. Well, today, I put away childish things, but I still embrace a childlike faith in him. Today, I put away childish things, but still embrace a childlike faith in him. What's Jesus believe? Well, I'm going to believe it too. What's, what's Jesus believe about healing? Well, you know what? I'm going to believe it too. What's Jesus believe about miracles? I'm going to believe it too. And there's a woman in Scripture that I want to put you on to that embody this type of faith. Turn with me, click with me, or if you want to just check it out on the screen, Matthew, 5, or Matthew 15, 21 through 22. And it reads this, And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. First of all, you have Jesus that was called to the Jews, Jesus that was called to the nation of Israel. He is going to Tyre and Sidon. He's going way out of bounds for some reason. What's he doing there? Well, anyway, he's going there, and this Canaanite woman, a Canaanite woman, she isn't even in the nation of Israel. She's Canaanite that's steeped in a pagan a ritual that was steeped in polytheistic culture. They believed in many, many gods except for the true God. Here it is. Her daughter is oppressed by a demon, and faith is welling up inside of her. You know what? This Jesus that I heard about, this Jesus that I know, he can say, I go, I went to every God, everyone to everywhere, nothing. But you know what? I believe that I have the hope of glory coming right now, and I think that's him. I'm going to go out to see him, and I'm going to go and press in for my healing because I know that I know that I know that he can heal. This is a Canaanite woman. This is not even a woman who's supposed to believe in Jesus. Let's carry on. It says this, but he did not answer her a word. He ain't say nothing. What? When you pressing in for breakthrough and you get nothing, do you quit or do you keep pressing in? Because it sounds like to me that this Canaanite woman understood his true nature. It sounds like to me that this Canaanite woman understood who Jesus, the real, real Jesus was. And she's coming in, pressing in, like, ah, I'm coming after you. I want my breakthrough. Jesus, I want my breakthrough. But he didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. But what's that? Does that stop her? No. She's like, you know what, Jesus? You can go ahead and play the silent treatment game on me. But I know you. I know you. I know you're better than that. I know you're a God of gods. I know that you are a good God. I know that you care for us and you want us whole in every way. My daughter's oppressed by a demon and they're not leaving here until I get that breakthrough. I am not leaving here till I get that breakthrough. That's called fierce faith. That's fierce faith. Verse 23 says this, And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered. <laughs> Check out this answer. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, well, Jesus, if you were sent to the lost sheep in the house of Israel, then why are you in Tyre and Sidon? Hmm. But it sounds like a rejection. It sounds like a straight-up dismissal. But the response of this Canaanite woman astounds me. Check out what she says <laughs> or does. But she came and knelt, knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. I know that I'm not the nation. I know I'm not in this tribe. I know I'm not in this class. I know I'm not in this house. I know I'm a Canaanite. I'm a Syrophoenician by birth. And you are called to the nation of Israel. I know all that, but I know that you're good. And I'm coming at you, and I know that you can heal my daughter. I'm not leaving here until I get what I need, because I know you would like to give that to me. That is fierce faith. And then it seems like another rejection and another rebuke after all that. <laughs> it sounds like to me, though, the whole time that Jesus is testing faith. Check out what he says. 
And he answered, it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Whoa! Now, before you guys get up like, oh, man, Jesus is calling her a female dog. Listen, it ain't about that at all, okay? He ain't going there. 2017, if he said that, probably, but it was AD 30, okay? It was a big difference, okay? People be like, yo, dang, that's messed up. Listen, Jesus was called to the nation of Israel. Children was the metaphor to, of the nation of Israel. The dogs are a metaphor of homeless scavengers, people who had no God, who had no true home, who had no, who had no recollection that Jesus Christ was the true God. Those were often called as pagans, God, uh, dogs. So he was saying that it is not right for the children's bread to take the children's bread, the children's blessings, to throw it to the dogs. But disciples, I'm sure, are like, Jesus, why are you even talking to her? Why, why, why are you even debating with her? What, is, what are you doing right now? But I'm sure they didn't even know what was going down. I'm sure they didn't even know that they were the ones really to get schooled at that very hour. Because it seems like another rebuke. It seems like Jesus was harsh again. But her response to that blows my mind. In, in Matthew 15, 27, she said this, Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, but yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Listen, I probably want to pack my bags up and left and said, All right, healing's not in the cards for me today. Obviously, he ain't trying to heal me today. Obviously, I guess I got to go ahead and be a diabetic for the rest of my life and just get used to it. Oh, well, sarah, sarah, what will be, will be. Oh, well, I guess my, my, my daughter has to be oppressed by a demon for the rest of her life. And we just might as well turn around, pack up, do whatever. I might as well live with cancer for the rest of my life. I might as well live with this mental illness for the rest of my life because it doesn't seem like the heavens are responding to me right now. It seems like there's just rejection after rejection right now. But what's the Canaanite woman do? She is hearing this and she is pressing in and saying, Lord, even the, 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 the dogs get crumbs. Just give me the crumbs. That's all I need. That will bless me abundantly. And I'm sure the disciples were getting schooled that day because she was teaching them how to press in. Because what's Jesus say? Oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was instantly healed. Her daughter was instantly healed. Jesus says, wow, I have found a person who knows me. Wow, I have found a person who's passionately pursuing me. I have found someone who has a fierce faith that I like. And I can hear him saying, to, yeah, I, can, I found somebody. I found it. This girl gets me. And I can even hear Jesus saying, hey, Peter, James, and John, hey, look at this girl, huh? Huh? Yeah? Look, this girl got mad faith. This girl's packing more faith than the whole nation of Israel combined. Come on. Jesus honors faith. He took her on round after round, exercising her faith, growing her faith, moving from faith to faith to faith to faith. And then guess what? Bam! Breakthrough. She didn't stop. Inspires me. The Bible is filled of people left and right that keep pressing in for Jesus. Talking about the Roman centurion. How about the, the woman with the bleeding disorder with 12 years pressing in? She's a woman who's bleeding two strikes against her. She is not supposed to come up to no man, no rabbi. But it didn't stop her. She's pressing in. The, the ruler of the synagogue that wanted his kid healed, the, the father of the demon-possessed boy, they all had something in common. They all pressed in for, to Jesus for their breakthrough. They pressed in because they wanted to walk by his faith, not by their faith. They wanted to believe what he believed. I believe. Help me in my unbelief. I believe what you believe. Help me in my unbelief. I'm going to press in because I want to walk by your faith. What's Jesus believe? Then I'll believe it too. My, my sister Kate Dudley, she has a remarkable story. Um, 
she came to Jesus at a, at a young age and uh, for 15 years had to deal with mental illness. And in those 15 years, she had to deal with attack after attack after attack from the enemy that almost tried to take her out and this and that. Now, I'm actually, I'm going to let her tell you the story. Check out this clip. I'm very thankful for Healing Rooms. I'm able to lead worship in there uh, every time. And I've been able to find that through worship, I have been able to be healed even more. And that Jesus is using that as a tool for me so that when I sing and when I play for people, that they experience healing through that. And through this year, I've definitely felt that Jesus wants to heal even more so mental health specifically. I've gotten that word all year that 2016 and 2017 are the years. And I remember back in March of 2016, um, my body was being physically attacked by the enemy. And oh, just one day, March 31st, 2016, I was allergic to all food all suddenly, except for sweet potatoes, bananas, and rice. And I had um, dropped about 12 pounds in a week. And I knew Satan was triggering that eating disorder in me. He wanted me to crave that again. He wanted me to use that again. And I remember going to specialist after specialist, trying to figure out what was happening or what this autoimmune disease was. Uh, I had a couple pastors pray over me and they were telling me that the spirit, the spirit of death was upon me. And they could, they could feel Satan's claw within me, just trying to take me down. And someone had mentioned that they felt that there might've been some sort of other presence there, whether it was a demonic one or just that I needed some deliverance. And we had tried to pray through it, but it just didn't seem to leave. And so um, in the fall, I remember D Robbie Dawkins was speaking and he was talking about how he was delivering people from um, demons and just other spiritual warfare and whatnot. And that he was giving a story where someone had sighed and it was almost like the demon had came out of them. And that day I looked at my mom and I said, it's today, it's going to happen today. So I went down uh, for the last worship song and it was no longer slaves. And I remember lifting my hands and singing and bawling my eyes out. And someone from Healing Rooms that I know came up and laid her hands on me and started speaking in tongues. And I just, I could just feel it coming. Other people started gathering and then eventually Putty came over. And he said, Kate, today's the day. This thing is leaving you. And I just remember he, he pressed onto my, to my hands like this right here. And I was slain for the first time. And I fell to the ground and my body was contorting uh, a little bit and just shaking. And again, I remember being very scared, but at the same time, I was more scared because it, it was almost this weird feeling of loss of like, I've held on to this thing for half of my life and now it's going to leave. And that feels really good, but also really weird and really scary to think that there, there's been this thing, a part of me, this thing that like created my identity for 15 years and now it's going to be gone but how cool it is that it's being replaced by love and all of that. And I knew that that was the moment that that hole that I had, that crater inside my heart that was created when I was five years old was finally being really healed. Good. Kate, I love you, sis. Just learning your story is amazing. It's amazing. Um, I fell in love with the story and I, I believe that you're going to fall in love with it too whenever you watch your story in its entirety. Jesus Hill Small Groups, you can go check it out. Mid-Size Group meets on Tuesday here at the Urbana campus. Um, campus is um, uh, Sullivan, Muhammad, um, Bloomington. You could go ahead and get involved with it in any small group as well too. It's going down and it's good because we want to learn a little more about how Jesus is healing through us in us. But what was interesting that she said is she pointed out worship. And how worship, y'all, is a tool that can be used to press in for more breakthrough. That worship is the tool that we can use to press in and step in the places of more breakthrough. The enemy hates worship. Actually can't be around worship, okay? It's, it's, it's this carnage to their very, their ears. They can't be around it. When we worship the breakthrough, that's something that, that is a powerful tool and a conduit that can help us usher into a new place. 1 Samuel 16, 23, um, you read how Saul had a harmful spirit. But as soon as David played his harp, the harmful spirit left. Spirits flee when we worship, you know. So worship is good. 
Don't ever discount worship. Don't discount worship because worship is good. Anyways, back to my story. When I had diabetes, I was in a church, again, that believed in healing. I'm praying for myself to be healed. I'm going to my small groups and getting prayer. Nothing. I'm coming up to the ministry line getting prayer. Nothing. Okay. Robbie Dawkins, he's praying for me. Randy Clark, praying for me. These people praying for me. Going out every conference, I'm getting prayer. Man, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm, st- I'm still, you know, I have this thing. To add insult to injury, I am praying for people, right, to, that have diabetes to be healed. They're getting healed. And I'm like, what's going on? God, I thought I was your favorite over here. Man, you know, what's going on? I mean, I mean where's my breakthrough at, Lord, right? And to this day, I can say that I still have Diabetes, the numbers still read to this day that I have diabetes. I've been diagnosed with this thing and had this thing for 15 years. Now listen, I don't identify with this thing. I don't agree to this thing. I'm still pressing in. I'm still going after my healing. There's nothing that's going to stop me going after this thing. But you know what? It runs in my family like straight up cancer. And I am not okay with it. Don't think that I'm okay with it for a second. Because I'm not. I'm praying after this thing aggressively. Listen, my cousin, who is 20 years old, lost his life to the complications of diabetes. My cousin, he's too young to be dying. His mother, my aunt, she lost both of her feet, amputated from diabetes. Like, what is going on? My mother and dad, my mom and dad, they got it. Um, My brother has it. It's like, okay. This is not cool. My grandmother had dialysis before she died. She had it and all that. They were dying young because of complications of this thing. And I can get overwhelmed. I can get overwhelmed and walk by sight. I can get overwhelmed with the feelings. I can get overwhelmed with what it sounds like or what it looks like. Or I can believe and I can press in and I can say, you know what, God? I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you like that Canaanite woman. I'm going to come run to you and say, you know what? I am not leaving till I get a breakthrough. I'm not leaving till I get a healing. I'm not leaving. There's no way. And in the process, I, I'm going to still be on my grind because I'll take as many suckers, as many demons out as I can in the process. But in the process of that, I'm still leading into my breakthrough. Listen, I don't agree with this thing, but my numbers indicate I'm diabetic. So what I have to do is I have to be a wise steward of my my body. I can't go out and eat McDonald's every day. I can't go out and eat fried chicken every other day. You know what I mean? There's consequences to that, okay? You know, I got to take my blood work seriously. I got to take my meds. I got to work out. I got to continue to keep doing what I need to do to make sure that I'm trying to do the best I can to be a wise steward and reverse this thing while at the same time believing for my healing, while at the same time believing that God is for me, while at the same time believing that I will be healed of this thing. There ain't no way the the Canaanite women is going to outdo me when it comes to fierce faith. No way! I'm going to press in. I'm going to keep going after this thing. So I'm believing. I'm believing for my healing. Matthew 7, 7, it reads this. Ask and will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Listen, you can knock. You cannot, but it doesn't mean that the door is going to open right away. It doesn't mean that, that, that things are going to happen for you right away. This thing sometimes is not for the casual seeker. It's not sometimes for the, oh, I knocked one time and I'm just going to go home. No, you keep knocking. You haven't gotten your breakthrough yet, you keep knocking. You haven't gotten healed of cancer yet, then you keep asking. You haven't gotten the healing from mental illness yet, then you keep on pressing in. You keep on going. You keep on knocking. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. And I'm about to close, but for some of you here today, you have, you have not received your breakthrough. Whatever you're praying for, you, it hasn't happened yet. And you can feel that you're in a battlefield. It can feel like you're in a battlefield of delay. But God He may be testing you. He may be testing the measure. He may be uh, increasing or training you to believe what he believes. He may be exercising your faith. He may be growing to the measure of your faith like he did that Canaanite woman. 
So how was Jesus exercising your faith? How was Jesus growing you up to believe what he believes? Listen, church, I don't have it all together. I don't claim even know all the answers and all that. But one thing I do know, forgetting what lies behind, straining forth for what lies ahead, I will press on towards the goal of the prize of the upward call. I will press on towards the goal of the prize of the upward call. Forgetting what lies behind, forgetting what lies to the right, forgetting what lies to the left. I'm going to press on and keep my eyes fixated on the author and the finisher finisher and the perfecter of my faith. I'm going to keep my eyes fixated and worship him and submit all things to him. So church, listen up to this action step. Muhammad, Bloomington, Sullivan, check this action step out. Well, I want you guys to hear this. When, when, it, when the battle gets tough, when things are confusing, when it feels like, you know what, nothing's happening in the heavens, they're ignoring me, I'm not getting my breakthrough. The action step I would like for you guys to take is to refuse the temptation to walk by sight. Refuse the temptation to walk by your feelings. Refuse the temptation to walk by what you can see, by walk by what you can hear about. Refuse the temptation to walk by sight and grow in his faith toward breakthrough. Grow in his faith toward breakthrough because the righteous walk by his faith. The righteous walk by his faith. Father, I pray, Lord God, that, you know, I know that you are a good God. I know that you want good things for us. I know that you have breakthrough coming. And you want your sons and daughters, your daughters and sons, to experience the full measure of breakthrough in their lives, Lord. So I pray that you continue to exercise and grow us up so that we think like you on every level and believe like you on every level because the righteous walk by his faith. And we want to live that as a mantra of our lives in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? Thanks for listening to the message today. To experience more powerful messages, go to vineyardlive.us or join our Vineyard Live Plus community to view conferences, trainings, and special teachings.